Welcome to Zoom Times TV, and here's your host, Anita Finley. Okay, everybody. Hello. This is another exciting Zoom Zoomer Times TV presentation, and I am very happy to introduce again our wonderful friend who's been uh, kind of on a uh, well, she's been working so hard at the Bowling Center, she hasn't had time really to talk to us, but we got her today. <laughs> and um, it's, it's wonderful to have you back, Kim Vito, and we, we really applaud you. I know it's been very hard. Why don't you share with us, if we went to the Bowling Center, what we would find today? So today is quite different than it was when we were going through the pandemic. We are super busy. Um, the life enrichment uh, section of the Volan Center, which is the active senior center, is um, busy all day long from 9.30 in the morning till the bus leaves around 3.30, quarter to four. We are doing on Monday, um, lunch bunch, where everyone goes out to lunch to a local restaurant, different restaurants each week. And then of course our, bus, our buses and transportation bring them back here for the rest of the day. They're doing field trips every week also. We've been to Gumbo Limbo. We went to the casino. Quite a few people won a couple hundred dollars. Um, today, they're going to Boca Town Center Mall. Uh, we go to Carvel. We do many field trips uh, during the week, as well as bingo at 1230 on Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, that is the Active Senior Center. Uh, the adult daycare centers at East Boca, West Boca, and Del Rey are getting very full. Um, I have capacity between 102 and 45, and we're getting up there. You know, Kim, it's wonderful to hear all these numbers because it hasn't been like this, but if someone does go there, they do, are they all masked and they're all vaccinated? So they, we do not require vaccination. Um, I will say in my adult daycares, everyone is vaccinated. Everyone wears masks in the adult daycares because it is a secure facility. All staff wear masks. Uh, in the active senior center, we of course recommend mask wearing and of course recommend the vaccination, but it is not mandatory, nor would we know. It's just, it's an open active senior center, just as if you were walking into Publix, no one's carrying around their medical card. Um, but we had, we haven't had any major issues. Of course, there's been some people here and there who have come down with COVID, uh, in breakthrough cases of vaccination. Um, I myself had a breakthrough case of COVID after vaccination. Um, but everyone's come through it fine. Those are good words. I'm glad to hear that. I was there the other day visiting with uh, Jared, who is the executive director, wonderful man. He's just amazing to me that he has such uh, management skills to take care of all the employees, all the staff, the buses. The he is an um, he's a marvel, and I, I was so pleased to talk with him. I took about an hour of his time, which I hated to do, but he's so smart because we were really thinking about having our expo there in January. But after discussing this with him. We really decided to put it off into the spring or, or just do something different, I'm not sure. But I wanna go back and talk to you about bingo because I get the feeling that bingo is the thing that everyone wants to come for. What kind of prizes do you give out and does it cost people to play bingo? So it costs whatever, they, whatever um, form they choose to use, whatever card they choose to use, you buy different cards between, I think they're between seven, five, seven, fifteen dollars and depending on the game that you're participating in is the prize, uh, the, the cash prize, always the cash prize. Um, sometimes they do little prizes like, you know, lunch or coffee or something like that, but mostly cash prize. I wanna say a couple of weeks ago, someone won $250. It's getting pretty packed in here too. You see the line out the door in the afternoons on Wednesdays and Fridays. And so, what is the minimum? Can someone play without paying anything? Um, no, the, they have to buy their bingo cards. And and if they buy one card, what does that cost? 
I, th- I want to say it's five dollars, five or seven dollars, depending on the games they're playing and the cards they're playing. They announce the games as you go in. Like if you want to participate, you know, this is a five dollar card. This pot is worth fifty dollars. This pot is worth twenty five dollars, depending on who's playing. So it, it's getting very busy. I know we're promoting it on Facebook. Um, so we do get a lot of people coming in on those two days. Plus, we do Carvel runs on those days. Um, People come earlier than bingo and we do Walmart runs, Publix runs uh, on our buses. So, you know, people get their chores done or their errands done on those days also. Well, but you have a big screen there, too, as uh, uh, compared to some other places. So it's easy for people to play, isn't it? It is. We have a a big uh, a bingo uh, a ball spinner and a big thing up on the wall that shows the numbers. And of course, we have people who help others too. We have volunteers that come in and someone who may have some, you know, visual impairment or even a hearing impairment, somebody can assist them. So for me, thinking about this, the bingo uh, is one way to get people to come to the bowling center. Actually, it's a, it's an enticement. They have it fun, is. they can win money and, and then um, they can volunteer too. They can volunteer. And on Thursdays, we have live entertainment um, for an hour and a half dancing, um, snacks, uh, socialization, sometimes a theme party. We had a Hawaiian party a couple months ago, um, sort of a luau theme. Lots and lots of fun. Lots of people um, socializing, getting back out in the world again. And how about food? What happens there with food? We are a congregate meal site. All of the adult daycare centers are congregate meal sites. So anyone over 60 can eat for free through the Older Americans Act. We have a caterer, hot meals uh, every day. All the sites serve lunch. The adult daycare sites serve breakfast also. So everything from turkey, meatloaf, to hot dogs and hamburgers, to uh, different Asian foods that sometimes they make, uh, rice and beans and vegetables, great, great meals, all balanced diet. Um, breakfasts are usually waffles and um, like an egg McMuffin sort of thing. Um, cereals sometimes, uh, but we are congregate meal sites. So come in, check out the Volan Center and you'll see all the activities, socialization and have a good hot meal. And people have to sign up for the meal, though. Let's say they don't want to do anything but just the meal. Can they do that? What do they have yes, to do? Serve. They just have to reserve the meal. So, of course, that we have enough for everyone who's coming. They can call to reserve the meal. They do a little assessment to see, you know, how much they are eating, how much they are drinking, and if they're getting the appropriate types of foods. And then um, the assessment goes in to a database and their name appears on a roster every day and you know the days that they want to come they let the staff know and there's a meal prepared for them now at one time you were sending meals home that you don't send meals home anymore i gather so that was the emergency covid meals we were sending meals 14 days of meals Mm -hmm. no seven days of meals 14 meals um for seven days Uh, home. We were sending that out twice a week. And the other three days of week, we were packaging the meals here and people could drive through and pick them up. But now that we've seen the surge decrease, um, the COVID meals are not going home. We are doing hurricane packages now. We just delivered 6,000 hurricane packages over the last two months. Um, And those are shelf stable meals, canned foods, snacks, um, nuts and, and crackers and oatmeal. So, and I want to say we still have about 3,500 other hurricane packages to send out. So we're constantly busy providing for South Palm Beach County. I, I just, I'm always in awe of what you all do. It takes, you know, when you say this, people should understand all you think about is making your dinner, going to the grocery store, shopping, or making breakfast. Just think about what this organization does for so many people every single day. So, so people can't come there on Saturday and Sunday. So do you send them home with some food? 
So we generally are not packing up food anymore. If somebody needs food, we'll always, of course, find them shelf stable meals to take home. We, we don't turn anyone away. We're constantly working to assist people in any way we can. We have a case management department that works with people who are having difficulty, like paying their Florida power and light bill so they can come in. And as long as they have the right documentation, they can get some help. We will also refer people to the area agency to see if they can get some assistance, priority-based assistance through um, the Department of Elder Affairs. But we're, we're constantly working to provide for South Palm Beach County and the seniors of South Palm Beach County. Amazing job. I just, um, I tell people, you know, when I say, do you know about the Volan Center? And they said, no. And I, I guess I start off to make them understand there are 27 buses, correct? 27 buses that you I run? I want to have 30 now. I've got a couple new ones. So if you see these white buses that aren't wrapped yet, that, that could be us. We're, we're waiting to wrap them. So we, we have about 30 buses and we are out there. <laughs> 30 buses. And of course, every bus requires a driver and someone right. who's been trained to help people. And, and what do the buses do generally? So in the mornings, um, we will do the first run, uh, bringing clients into the daycare centers. A lot of, of course, caregivers still have to go to work. Uh, they also need respite. So they send their loved ones into daycare to have a fun day, uh, a day of, you know, socializing and group activity. They also, then they will do the run for the active senior center. So those seniors come a little later in the day. And then throughout the day, we do medical runs. If people have medical appointments that they need to get to, as long as they contact transportation 20 more, 24 hours in advance, transportation will go pick them up and take them to their doctor appointment and then come back and get them. If they need to go to the grocery store or the pharmacy, um, they can just contact transportation and we will take them. In the afternoon, of course, the buses um, take the clients home. So the active senior center leaves first and then the last bus run is around four o'clock and the buses take the clients home. So we do 300 or more rides a day, I would say. How many? 300 or more a day. You know, you, you shoot these numbers out and it's like I shake my head because <laughs> it's so unbelievable. But I think I also want to talk about volunteers. We used to really push for volunteers, but during the COVID, volunteers were scarce. Now, what's happening? Are you wanting more volunteers again? So I, of course, we always want volunteers, um, people to come and assist with um, helping serve our meals, helping people just navigate the Volan Center. It's a big place. Um, introduce people to others. Just be a greeter even. Just come in and have fun yourself. Um, I am. I have started a program with the um, Palm Beach State where their nursing students are coming in to volunteer, which is wonderful in the daycare. So they can come in and and they haven't you know done any community engagements in the last eighteen months. So you know before the, these people graduate and get out there into the world, come come see the Volan Center and um, you know do some community uh, work and see, see what we do. And you are an RN. I, I don't want people to misunderstand. You're not an activity director. This is a woman no. who has been an RN, has worked in hospitals, medical offices, and now she really is the heart and soul of what happens at the, uh, at the Bowen Center. And the reason is, is because she is so experienced and she knows what an, especially an elder adult needs. There are, mm -hmm. many, there are many people who don't really appreciate that. I wanna just tell you something fun that happened when I was going into the Volan Center last week to meet with um, Jared, I, I guess I looked like I didn't know where I was going and someone playing cards or sitting said, hello, are you new, new there? You wanna come over here and join us? And I smiled, I said, Thank you, that's so sweet of you. I'm meeting someone here. I mean, that was so nice, wasn't it? Yeah, that's wonderful. Everyone's wonderful here. You know, everyone is very welcoming. Uh, we introduced everyone. You know, it's always 
very uncomfortable for people when they come into a new environment. And that's why I find a lot of people stay home and isolate themselves. It, it is uncomfortable. That's normal. But we are very welcoming. The people are very welcoming. You just got to step out of your comfort zone and get in and meet people. Right. And, and let's talk about, I know you have a cafe and I don't think it has as much as it used to. Is it going to get stocked up again? So we still have hamburgers and bagels in the morning and of course snacks if they need them. We have a little bistro. So yes, as people are coming here, we are stocking up. Our big problem is, of course, as everyone's hearing, finding employees also, you know, to staff the bistro and to staff the daycares and to staff our home care section. It's, it's so difficult. So you don't use volunteers for those things? No, because they have to be specially trained, especially in the daycares and in our nurse registry. Um, it's just been, you know, you have all these people who need so much help. And I have to keep a ratio in the daycares. I'm required by my licensure to keep a certain staff to, to participant ratio. And finding people to employ has been one of the most difficult things I've come across in a very long time. Interesting enough that you should say that. I would think that people who, you know, love the love the senior population would want to be there rather than go to Publix or do something else like that, even though it may not pay the same. But, but um, I, I have to tell you, when you're there, your heart will be so warmed, and and all you need to do is follow Kim around. I mean, she. <laughs> Yeah, Kim is really, you know, I, I always make your ego sore, but I mean it so sincerely, Kim, because it takes a lot for you to get up every morning, go there, and, and, that, and everything is not easy. I know that. I mean, you just make it look like it's easy, but there are people with various illnesses or problems, and you have to take care of them, and while you're still entertaining the people who are there. I saw that when I was there, so it takes mm -hmm. someone who's got psychology background, has got a lot of things to know what to do. Mm -hmm. we, we, we do our best to make the quality of the time that is spent here the best that we can, um, especially in the adult daycares. You know, we, do, we deal with the caregivers, the changes that are going on, not just with the participant that's yeah. coming here, but the people that love and take care of them. Right. That's true. I, I think I've told the story, but I'll tell it again. There was a, a, a man who had his mother. He was living with his mother. And, and of course, he had a job. And he didn't know what he was going to do because his mother really needed help. And before I was, um, before we talked, there was a daycare center. It was just, it wasn't run by an organization like yours, but it was a daycare center. And they are around. And I said, had you considered a daycare center? He knew nothing about it. And I said, well... You can, if you can afford a daycare center, of course, they're more expensive than the Bolin Center, but you could afford that. And that, that way you can keep working. You can, they'll probably pick her up in the morning and uh -huh. drop her off. At night. They will have fed her. Uh, they will have made sure that she was clean and everything else. He was so excited and he did. He did call me after that. He said, it saved my life and my job. Uh -huh. it, people, people don't realize a lot of times, first of all, they, as a caregiver, even if they don't have a job to go to, if, if they're retired and they're a caregiver, they still need time on their own. They need respite. They need time to, to share and socialize with their friends, as well as the person, you know, that can't be left alone or that needs supervision. They don't need to just see the same face all the time. That's still isolating. Send them into daycare. They will have a good time. They will meet people. They will socialize. They will become participants in a group. Definitely. And of course, we offer a trial day. I, I welcome a tour. Come in and visit. You don't have to, you don't have to sign up. Just come in and walk through and and see if see what you think. Yeah, that's a very good idea. Have a tour. And it may not be Kim, but it'll be someone. If you just come to the front desk and that woman is very, very helpful. She, oh, yes. Whatever you need, she, she will help you do yeah. that. But the other thing you mentioned, I want to talk to you about that. So if someone needs more than you, your organization can give them, you do have counselors. You have people who will 
um, counsel them and then help their family. Tell us about that. So we have case management uh, when a client is referred to us from the Department of Elder Affairs, our case managers do assessments. If th they will make recommendations, say daycare, home care, in-home meals, supplies, um, and they will provide the funding for that once they you know, come, come off the wait list. Um, we also will, we are the, the provider for APS cases, adult protective services. So if there's an emergency case, I, I, we're doing a 24 hour case right now through our nurse register where someone doesn't have any supervision and really needs supervision and has, has no way to pay for regular supervision. So we, we do work with adult protective services also. When someone comes in there, how do they get trained to know even one quarter of what you know? When for staff that um, start here, we of course do, we give them um, written paperwork on uh, dementia or Alzheimer's disease. And then I always provide within, I try to do it within the first 24 hours that they're employed here, a four hour course on Alzheimer's and dementia. And then, of course, we have a protocol that we follow, an orientation that walks everyone through everything from, you know, assisting someone out of a chair to our comprehensive emergency management plan. You know, if a train car flips over off of Dixie Highway and spills hazardous material, all they have to do is go to the book and see what the Volan Center does if that happens. And I was thinking as you were talking about volunteers, uh, you know that I've run into a lot of retired physicians and I've asked them, some of them are writing books, but I don't know what they do with their time. I mean, some of them don't play golf and they, but even if they do, wouldn't it be wonderful to have some of people with, with that kind of uh, talent, you know, to, to be a volunteer? Do you have oh, anybody sure. any chance? I don't, we do not have many physician volunteers that I am aware of. It would be great if they wanted to come and do a talk on nutrition, on exercise, on the importance of regular doctor visits. You wouldn't believe how many people haven't, you know, seen a physician in 18 months uh, because they're so afraid. And then you have, you know, progressive diseases that are progressing over this time. And, you know, by the time that they're, they're seeking some help, it's progressed to a point where it may not be able to be corrected. So, you know, talks, come in and talk to, to come and do a talk and come in and volunteer your time. So when you say a talk, it would be in the, the daycare or do you also, you also said that you have programs where people the, come the talks, from the- Yeah, the, the talk, um, come in and do, speak to April. April is our life enrichment supervisor. She sets up for the active seniors. We put it on a on the website. People can go and see who's coming to talk. It's usually at 10 o'clock in the morning before they leave for field trips. It's, you know, the average active senior who comes in, maybe want to listen to, you know, some information on nutrition, exercise, you know, anything that somebody would want to share. Right. Well, we do have a columnist. I think I mentioned it to to her. Linda Sage and her, uh, her, her um, I, don't, I don't think you use the word boyfriend, but the person she's now with is a retired physician. I was thinking of them and they go and speak at a lot of the retirement communities, but I mentioned it and I said, you absolutely have to go there and do this. And I know, you know, it's, they're so spectacular that it would uh -huh. be a real joyful thing for, for that to happen. That would be wonderful if they wanted to come and volunteer. We're always looking for someone to do those type of presentations. I know. And um, do you, how do you get your speakers? Uh, sometimes they're professors. Um, sometimes they're, you know, um, businesses, of course, who want to come in and pro promote their business, but could be something definitely interesting for the senior population. Uh, so dietitians who just want to share the information they have. So it could be anyone. Okay, well, I probably have a list of people who might do that. I, I do know now great people. The problem is you don't want them to 
promote their products. That's not why they're coming. They're really to give information, correct? To give information, correct. Yeah. And the one thing I want to tell everybody, you don't have to worry about parking. The Bowen Center has the greatest parking. So if you want more information, why don't you go to BowenCenter.com? BowenCenter.com. Is that correct, Kim? That's correct. It's V O L E N, BowenCenter.com. And actually, you can go there with, you don't have to make an appointment to go there. Just go there, bring a friend, bring your family, and just take a tour, uh, see what's going on. And there might be services you need and you didn't know you could get because if you're an, an elder, it is possible there's no charge for a lot of the things they do. Correct. Definitely no charge for the meals. If you want to participate in many of the activities, they do have a membership program. It's $70 per year. Huh, that's that's <laughs> It's like, I can't even respond to that. That's just- That includes transportation and everything. Oh, wow. And you know, you're helping an organization and it includes all that for $70 a year. It's unbelievable. Well, right. I have to thank you, Kim. We're, uh, we're going to have to stop now, but I appreciate you taking the time and we will have you back again. You are first class. Um, you know thank that- you. that your reward really isn't in heaven. It's now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anita. It was so nice seeing you. Oh, it was wonderful talking to you, Kim. So take care of yourself, okay? Bye, you everybody. Too. We'll be talking again. Bye.